Hey yo, what's up guys? Professor here, P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-A-R. -S -S Today we're going to have another tutorial. It's actually going to be how to multi-route contact because if you've ever tried to use contact like I did and you never multi-routed it a long time ago, I did this and I made a pretty decent track and then the whole thing crashed on me because I was just opening a billion instances of contact. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be uh, multi-routing your contact um, generator. All right, so I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that today. I'm gonna to put a link down below to the site for the demo in case you guys wanna practice. It's a fairly expensive uh, sound generator, but damn, is it good. Anyways, guys, uh, let's hop right on into it. And be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna hop by more. I just finished up a new song today, actually, with my boy C-Flex. Um, and uh, we're about to be uh, working on a video for that. I'll be putting it up soon and uh, check out Pond5, all that other good stuff. But let's get right into this. Uh, I killed enough time, guys. Let's do this. All right, guys, so uh, let's get right into this. I'm going to first show you how to multi-route contact, and then I'm going to show you, you know, what you can do. Just a, you know, a very basic um, uh, showing of uh, what you can do when you multi-route contact in FL Studios, all right? And uh, how pretty you can make things sound, or how gritty or dirty. First, though, you need to add contact, of course, to your channels. Now, always add 16 or 8 out. Uh, reason why is because this is going to allow you to have multiple um, instruments loaded and on different channel racks and mixer inserts. So um, I'm just going to go with 16. And uh, you guys can save all these settings if you don't ever want to have to do it again. I'll show you that also as well. But uh, let's load in 16 out. All right. Now, first things first, we're going to have to go straight into these settings. And we need to set up our input port to zero. And that's uh, what that's doing is telling FL Studios what channels to listen to when you set up your MIDI's, uh, MIDI channels. So that's that. Next, we need to go into our output here. And we need to set up a bunch of uh, these. So a bunch of these right here. Not these. These. So we're going to add channels. And um, we're going to add... Three more channels, all right? We can add up to like eight on this one, but we're going to add three, all right? So, okay. And then you see how this is one and two? You're going to want to set this to number two to three and four. So this is going to be three, four. Next one, number three. Set that to four or five and six, excuse me, five and six. Then we're going to grab our last one here. And remember, you could do this up to like 16 or whatever. So you're going to click OK, and it's going to tell you, please close and reopen all plug-in instances to save your work beforehand in order to make sure changes become effective. That's fine. Um, that's just if you're having issues and it like and it's the uh, generator is not reflecting what you're trying to do, um, maybe reopening the project and reopening contact after you save will fix the issue. But it's really not that important. I've never had that issue. So just ignore it. All right, cool. So now that we have that, all right. So now that we got this going, we're gonna, um, excuse me, we're gonna grab, um, let's grab a drum and a piano and a bass or something. Or let's just let's just grab something. All right, now let's go back and get nice. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, let's go back and get All right, now, next, we gotta set these. This output is gonna be where it's gonna be going on our insert rack, and this is gonna be our channel, or our MIDI stuff. So, make that one, that's fine. That one groups, that's fine. Make this two. That's gonna reflect the three and four out that you have. <coughs> MIDI channel two, that's fine. Output three, make that three. Excellent. MIDI channel three, perfect, all right. So now let's set up our MIDI channels. Let's uh, alt up, put this at the top. Um, control delete. Uh, oh shit! I mean, uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna click the uh, delete on that. Yeah, we're just gonna delete all these. Okay, just, just get these out of your way. I mean, you don't have to, but you can, you can leave them there, there if you want. But we're just, we're just gonna get rid of those. All right, guys. Now let's add in a MIDI out. Uh, here we go. Under MIDI, we're gonna add three since we have three instruments. You can also just clone them over, but uh, I'm just going to do them separate. And this one, I'm going to set to channel 1. This one is going to be channel 2. This one 
is going to be channel 3. All right. So let's see. All right. So it looks like we already got things set up. Let's um, go do our next thing, though, which is fairly important. We need to go into contact. And we need to go to processing. We need to put this on uh, one. Uh, so that'll be one away from the channel that this is on. And then auto map outputs, one, two, three, four. So two is two spaces away on the insert, away from where you have the generator. Three is three spaces away. So if we put contact on five, it's going to be in generator five. You'll see this. But anytime we use these instruments, see, that's showing up on six. This will be on seven. And this will be on eight. So that's how you get... And, and of course, you can add your effects in here as well, like your reverb and stuff. But that's how you're going to be using multiple instruments. And then you can use them even at the same time. So let me just fast forward this so I can show you guys what's going on. All right, guys, so now that we're back, I'll just show you quickly how I have each of these in different patterns. Pattern two is the harp. Pattern three is the piano. And as you can see, these all have different instruments. That's just a loop in here. And then you can even do it on your playlist like this. And you can even go as far as, like I said, add separate um, effects to each channel. So my harp is right is right here on 7. Say I want to add a little bit of reverb on it or delay. I'm just going to go to Valhalla Shimmer, and I'll use, like, I'll use one of my, here we go, make that a little more tinny. And then uh, say I want the drums to be more... Uh, compressed so I want them to be louder we'll run in uh, we'll run in freaking fruity limiter let's find fruity limiter And let's say I want the piano to sound more delayed. For So I'm just going to go into number 8 and get that going. Alright, now as you can see, each of these have different effects on them, and they're only affecting the instrument. That's remember, because... We have them each set on a different output. So let's listen to it now. Alright guys, so that is pretty much it. That's how you multi-route contact. That's how you use the instrument separately. That's how you get them to go to different channels. That's how you get them to go to your MIDI. That's how you get them to come to go to different inserts in your mixer. That's this is just one example of what you can do when you're multi-routing contact. Nice.
well, actually, that's it. That's the example. So that's contact. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys are having a great night. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, this has been Professor, P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-A-R. Be sure to like and subscribe if this helped out, guys. Come back, check out more things. Leave, a re- leave any requests down there. Um, check out social media, SoundCloud, Pond5, Facebook, Instagram. SoundCloud's where you can listen to more music. Pond5 is where you can buy the things that I make. Uh, once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'll be releasing a lot of uh, uh, beats for free for you guys. And I'll be uh, doing another special treat for everyone. But uh, anyways... Enough uh, chatting. I hope I covered this in depth enough for everyone to understand what was going on. And I hope you guys all have a great day. So uh, peace out, boys.